you may or may not be familiar with um, famous hospital chains in, mm. in, in, in India. So Apollo, all these, where you're forced to see the whole panel, yeah. you know, Ekene is diagnosed with this. He must see, you know, only the Apollo doctors. But this way they felt, you know, you have a central point and then they can actually get you the best care. Okay. So we thought, okay, that's a good idea. We went, we found a small hotel nearby. They proceeded to take our blood work on that side. And um, when I actually got the diagnosis, uh, it was a brain tumor and it was a cancerous one. So we told now the, the family doctor and uh, proceeded, that was, I, I remember the diagnosis came on a Thursday. So we went to see a neurosurgeon and we were booked for, the, uh, for surgery on the, on the following Monday. And one of the things that you're medically advised against when, you are, when you've had a seizure is self-drive. Yeah. Yeah, so I was off self-drive for a year. Very excited that I could now drive at, at the beginning of 2014. So 2014, 2015, I lose my grandmother in 2016. Mm. Um, and we, we've just come from burying her. And I have another seizure. So what happened after that was several years of seizures. And each time... I would, I would take an MRI, go and have it analyzed, and there's, there's no record of anything. So you can imagine I'm, I'm very frustrated by this time um, until I got my diagnosis in 2018 that I have epilepsy. And really just to break down, Ekene, what, what, I'm, what I mean when I'm talking about this epilepsy, I feel like it's just a big word that at its core explains or describes several unexplained seizures. So as long as you've had more than two, then, then you know, we say you're living with epilepsy. Yeah. So to answer your question, it's, um, it hasn't had a lot of uh, global focus okay. so far. It's still a very little known condition, mm. Mm. but I feel like that is changing with the intentionality at the global level yeah. um, through that intersectoral global action plan, okay. which is being piloted in the four countries. Wow. Sharon, <laughs> how are you? I am super, how are you? Well, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. It's it's nice to see you for the it's first really good time. To see you. Yeah. For the, for the first, first time on yes. your podcast. Yeah, the first time on my podcast. The yeah. first time since two oh thousand and six. Since two thousand and six. Yes. That's a twenty no, that's a that's a seventeen years. Wow. <laughs> Somebody is actually that old. Somebody is 17 years old. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My 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 first daughter was uh she was a year old. When I came to when I came to Nairobi. To Nairobi, now, yeah. Now so, she's so now 18, she's 18. And she's 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 in university. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look well, at that. But it's good to see you. It is. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. How are you keeping generally? Good. Good. Yeah. You know? Good. All right. Okay. Wow. That's, that's good to hear. So, so how, how is Nairobi? How is Nairobi? You know, our um, meteorologists forecasted some heavy rains. They even <laughs> forecasted El Nino. El Nino. And then the Nairobi government went and and took some pictures of some sort of boats that have you know uh inflatable bottoms okay and said this is what we're going to now buy for <laughs> for our people who will be stranded 
but having said that no it's it's been it's been raining on and off Ooh. so even now there's just some rains um just winding up mm. so for i think well obviously climate change you know but uh this time for when they've said the short rains are october november mm. this time it's it's uh, it's worked out okay okay yeah how about you what's what's the weather like in the uk uh, well uh it's uh it's still rainy it's still rainy and yeah. right now uh it's getting darker midday of course by by, by four it's dark yes. you know yeah. so we are approaching the uh, autumn you okay know, yes yes yeah going to yeah so that's it so so uh, as autumn actually starts getting darker yes like by around autumn you you start getting the days are shorter yeah ah yeah. okay all right yeah so okay yeah very no, soon by by, by three by three thirty is dark it's dark yeah yeah I hadn't known that because, of course, the the only pictures I get to see of autumn are falling leaves and changing color. Mm. But they, they, there's never any mention or indication of that it gets dark earlier. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So by it by December, it it's it gets by by it, the sun by doesn't shine. By December, yeah. By by three, is dark. Yeah. But thank God, light. There's light, so we there see. is light. Yeah, but then, but then people do more, do less activities. Yeah, I can imagine to conserve energy, right? Well, yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's that's what people in this part of the world <laughs> has has done for for millennia. So yeah, you know. Yeah, but then you you still work out. You maintain your workout regime. Mm. Day day out for for me for me at this time because it's colder yeah I I don't do a lot of uh, physical activities right yeah yeah now okay. in the in the in the in the summer mm. and spring spring sp spring is my best time of the year yeah yeah it's a, it's a, it's a little bit cold just a little bit cold mm. but it's it's sunny. You yeah know? so i like this i like spring yeah i don't really i don't really like summer because it's too hot <laughs> yeah, hot and sticky <laughs> you know okay yeah good and, good and and that's that's why i love nairobi i love yeah. see the first time I, when i came to nairobi in yeah i loved this the weather wasn't too hot like yeah. it, it is in nigeria yeah. and then the same thing with S south africa you know, I love the weather. Right. The, the, the sunshine and the weather is not is not too cold. It's not too yes. hot or too cold. Actually, you're right. Just... Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. My 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 brief trip there, which we'll talk about later. Mm. Um, I remember that. I remember I could see the sun, but you don't feel it directly on you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Man, Sharon. Awesome. It's, uh, yes, it's, okay, ni it's nice to have you. It's, it's nice really to good you. to be here. Yes. Thank yes. you for having me. Good, good. So, uh, tell my see, we have been talking, uh, laughing. Yes. Yes. My 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 audience don't don't know who I'm talking to. So they don't they don't uh, know who I am. Yes. Please in introduce yourself to my audience. Yeah. Okay then. So. Um, I will introduce myself, I guess, as broadly as I can. Yes. And so, um, so I am Sharon, Sharon Bogua. My middle name or what we call home name is Wanjiro, which uh, in my culture is actually of the duck or of black. Mm. Right. Um, so I actually run two businesses which we can talk about a little more if yeah. you like. Um, and then I used to host a podcast, Wellness and You. Mm. Um, I serve on three boards and I volunteer in both the mental health and church spaces. Okay. Okay. Right. Good. 
Good. Yeah. So t t t t tell me those businesses that you run, right? What are what are they? What what, what kind are, of business? Yeah. Are they what today? do they do? Okay. So contextually, I worked in the market research industry okay. for a while. So even if I studied something different, mm. I like to tell people I found myself in market research. Um, so I worked there for for a for a while. And then um, I ended up having to move to our family business. Um, still sort of like marketing and admin yeah. um, related, but then we had to sell the business. Okay. This is close to eight years ago. So a few years after that, I started my consultancy. It's called Amethyst uh, Consulting. And the reason it's a complicated name <laughs> is because I named it for the gemstone associated with my month. Okay. So there's a story that goes that for every month, there's a corresponding gemstone. And uh, for me, who was born in February, then Amethyst is the birthstone. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the name. It's, uh, it's about five years old now. Okay. Um, business is fair, could always be better, mm. um, but, but that's, that's one. And then two is, um, I used to teach music. Yeah. Uh, you remember that? Mm -hmm. You remember that, me telling that's, you? That's what we'll, we'll talk about you, in, you being into music when... Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I used to teach, um, little kids piano many years ago. And then um, fast forward up to last year, uh, it was an election year, was not doing too much, uh, you know, in my other business. Yeah. So I thought, why not go back to this? Um, started slowly, um, still, again, not where I'd like to be, but definitely much more presence online. Um, yeah. So lots more inquiries right now. Good. Um, both piano and voice. I offer voice coaching services. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see where those two take me. Very good. Very good. See, yeah, uh, I'm I'm happy that uh, the internet has availed so many people opportunities to explore different different areas of uh, business. Yeah. And it's, that's that's it's very true. Good. That's true. That's true. You're right, Ekene. And in fact, one of my soon-to-be students is based in the U.S. Okay. So, um, so I'll you know I'll hook up my keyboard, and we'll have a virtual session. Wow. And um, you know, back a few years ago, that that wasn't possible. Exactly. So, yeah. Thankful for the internet. That's good. That's very good. Like we're saying, uh, we met uh, 2006. Yeah, I we think, met 2006 through I a think, mutual I, friend. I, I think I think it was either late, no, late Ju June or July. Yes, that's that's when I, it, I, it was mid year. Yes. Yeah, I I left yeah. uh, I left Joburg and then I came. Me and my colleagues came to Nairobi. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then you were working with Citibank. Citibank, yes. Yeah, and yeah. you were you were, you were a friend of one of our one of one of our colleagues in, in the office. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The Nairobi office here. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, did we meet at a? I feel like we met at a club. No, we first met. I think. Uh, oh God. What's your your friend's name now? Oh my God. I don't, I can Sharon. I can Sharon. Yeah. No. Were you both called Sharon? Your friend. No, my friend, my friend is called Jane. Jane, yes, yes. Yeah. Jane. Jane. Uh-huh. I think we I can't remember. Either we went to Jane's house. Yeah. Uh the the the, the gentleman uh Andrew Waboko. Yes. Okay, another colleague. Took yes. us to Jane's house. Yes. And then you were there. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. 
the, that was the, that was the I, first time. And the right. second time, the second time, we went to this lovely, I don't know if it's a restaurant or a club, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember, we, I remember meeting you at Carnival. Uh, yeah, that, that's what it's called. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. so we, we, we met there. Yeah. That, that's yes. It. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and chatted a mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So since, since, since then, now since then. I talked to you for the first time last a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Few, yeah. Few, going on to a month ago. Yeah. Good. Good. And then you told me that uh, so many things have been going on in your yeah. life. Okay. Yeah. Now, mm. some of them are life changing events. Yes. Okay. Yes, they were. And mm. uh, I would like you to talk about, for us to talk about them. Because right. for me too, I had a life changing event in my life. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and see, th- these things are. Are more common mm. amongst people like us, our age yes. group. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. You're right. Yeah. It's it's important for us to talk about these things. And mm. yeah. So what what do you want to tell my guests, my my audience about about your 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 situation? Uh, yeah, about about my life changing events. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think when I look back you know we could we could talk about quite a few yeah but i imagine you would be interested in the one that has impacted me the most yeah and um and i feel like a diagnosis of seizure disorder in 2018 is the one that uh has impacted me the most Mm. and if if you like, if your if your listeners like, I'm I'm happy to yeah. to share part of that story. Please share, please share. So so um, twenty twelve December twenty twelve, I was working for a research firm by then, and I was actually on leave, and uh, was having coffee with a friend, and literally one minute I was fine. In fact, we were discussing whether to order cake because we were both ladies and conscious of our weight. Mm. <laughs> and then the next, I wake up in a dark room. Wow. So um, so I, I, I open my eyes and it's the, the clinic because how I, I, was, uh, I was at the Aga Khan Hospital Satellite Clinic. So we have the main hospital uh, on Limuru Road, Nairobi, but they're sort of several smaller clinics around the city. Um, so, so yes, I was in that satellite clinic and uh, I woke up to find my cousin and my aunt and I was told I had had a seizure, never had it before in my life. So I'm like, I, you know, I really want to know what's behind this seizure. So from where we were, the nearest hospital was uh, in an an area called Karen, you may or may not know it. Mm. Um, And so there's a hospital for that area, Karen Hospital. So we went there, my cousin drove me there and I was admitted. I proceeded to be admitted for five days. They did all sorts of tests on me, you know, many of them blood work. And by the time I was discharged, I was misdiagnosed with a heart condition. So by then my parents didn't stay in Nairobi. Um, My mother had come up during the week while I was in hospital. So when I was discharged, I connected with her and we told ourselves, I remember telling ourselves, we are not experts, but it doesn't sound like a heart condition can lead to a seizure, you know? But this is the hospital. They know best. Mm. So we went to see the heart specialist, were given medication. But then we proceeded to see some neurologists on our own. Yeah. All right. So we made a few appointments. um, And while that was going on, um, you know, my parents would speak. My father was out of Nairobi. And he's the one who suggested India. And at the time, I was like, 
no, this is Kenya. We're developing. We're going to find out what is wrong with me. But you know, the reality was I, I didn't know by then. I didn't, I didn't even have an explanation to give my bosses. This was going on to the end of January. Remember, I've been on leave from December. Yeah. I was due to go back early January. I didn't know what was wrong with me. So we proceeded to make arrangements and I, I left for Bombay. What happened was um, our family doctor, who is uh, based out of Nairobi, um, we conferred with him a bit and he suggested that we go to a similar family setup in Bombay, uh, as opposed to, you may or may not be familiar with um, famous hospital chains. In, mm. in, in, in India. So Apollo, all these, where you're forced to see the whole panel, yeah. you know, Ekene is diagnosed with this, he must see, you know, only the Apollo doctors. But this way they felt, you know, you have a central point and then they can actually oh. get you the best care. Okay. So we thought, okay, that's a good idea. We went, we found a small hotel nearby. They proceeded to take our blood work on that side and um when i actually got the diagnosis uh it was a brain tumor and it was a cancerous one wow. so my mom is here in nairobi um she was busy with planning my 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 uh, you know the wedding of, of a, a good friend of my younger sister so till now she's like I think we were both in yeah. shock because, you know, that's not news that you take lightly. Yeah. But, you know, she's like, you know, you do what you have to do kind of approach. Um, so we told now the, the family doctor and uh, proceeded. That was, I, I remember the diagnosis came on a Thursday. So we went to see a neurosurgeon and we were booked for the, uh, for surgery on the on the following Monday. Um, so I mean, you can imagine I had all these feelings, and and being a lady, I was like, I was I was in braids, so I'm like, are they gonna cut my hair? You know, oh I just God. there were all these questions and valid you know valid questions. Yeah. Um, so I go in, I went under for seven hours, I woke up. Uh, you know, did recovery in, in the hospital. I woke up in ICU, um, spent the rest of the recovery at the, at the hospital, main hospital. And then I was discharged and proceeded to recover. Now, th that, that section of that story ends with the fact that because it was cancerous, I needed to have a biopsy, uh, yeah. you know, studied. So they, they, they advised me to go to a larger facility which had the uh, equipment to test the biopsy and that I would get the results a few days later. But then I stayed on an extra week and I was really upset because I'm like, come on, you know, if, if they found even a trace of cancer, I would be grounded in India mm. for treatment. Yeah. Um, so God is so good, though I didn't get the the actual slip, uh, how they do it in India is that you make a case for the treatment that you, you're going to prescribe for your patient. And they couldn't agree on me needing either uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Mm. So, um, so with that news, I was able to come back to Kenya um, and then and to Mombasa which is where my family was based. Okay. So we made a point to go and check in on my family doctor. By this time, you know, I'm, I'm on work mode. You know, I'm, I was in touch with my colleagues before I went under, um, you know, and I'm telling them, you know, I'll see you, I'll see you soon. And then our family doctor says, no, you're not going to see them soon. You've had intense surgery on yeah. your brain and on your head, you need at least three months to recover. So I'm like, okay, so 
that section of that story ends because by that time, remember I was talking about leave in, in December, Yeah. getting the diagnosis in February. So I'm now going back in May and telling them, you know, this is, this is what was wrong. This is what has happened. And uh, the MD of that company was really, really good as far as, you know, that they'll make arrangements around me. Yeah. You know, um, because one of my concerns was perhaps it was the pace of the, of the office. Mm. Uh, I had to make the difficult decision to resign um, on medical reasons. And then I also had to make arrangements to travel back to India. So yeah, you, so, you so I'm back in Nairobi. I've I've resigned from from my work. I've made travel arrangements to go back to India for review. Was given a clean bill of health. Very excited. Yeah. Actually held a Thanksgiving service at the end of that year. And 2014 starts. And one of the things that you're medically advised against when you are when you've had a seizure is self drive. Yeah. Yeah. So I was off self drive for a year. Very excited that I could now drive at, at the beginning of 2014. So 2014, 2015, I lose my grandmother in 2016. Mm. Um, and we've, we've just come from burying her. And I have another seizure. And I black out, find myself. Uh, in a wheel, you know, in on a wheelchair at Juja Hospital, which was not too far from where we were, mm. and then you know was taken to Aga Khan Hospital for observation. Um. So what happened after that was several years of seizures, and each time I would I would take an MRI, go and have it. Uh, you know, examined. Yeah, and and analyzed. Analyzed, and there's there's no record of anything. So you can imagine I'm I'm very frustrated by this time. Um, until I got my diagnosis in 2018, that I have epilepsy. So whereas, for most people that would be sad, I was very happy to have a name for yeah. this thing that was plaguing me. Um, and I proceeded to now just read up on, on, on it. I joined a welfare association um, for it. I became what I call an epilepsy warrior, you mm. know, have been on broadcast media uh, about it um, through, through the welfare association. I was connected to um, the vice president of the so, so on a global level, we have what is called the International Bureau of Epilepsy. And that was founded by professionals and just like-minded individuals yeah. who wanted to make a case for epilepsy. Uh, and that was in the 60s. So it's, a, it's still alive today. Is it a, a worldwide uh, association? It is. It is. Okay. It's, a global, it's a global organization. And there are 27 chapters in Africa. Okay. So I was I was put in touch with the vice president uh, of Africa region, mm. who is a Malawian. And uh, through him, I got exposure to all sorts of platforms. Mm. Um, and then it was uh, last, last year, last year, yes, um, I got to know about... Um, a community council position under the International Bureau of Epilepsy. Okay. Um, which now, you know, we needed to apply for. Yeah. And I'm very pleased to say that I was selected to represent Kenya. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, mm. So we've, we've had a couple of meetings. Yeah. We're, we're 40 individuals from all over the world. So you can imagine time zone differences. Yeah. By the time, by the time you get you get a meeting together. Yeah. Um, so so yes, we are we are at the start of uh, strategic conversations. Okay. And uh, 
we are open to see what the new year will bring. Mm, mm, yeah. Wow. Uh, Sharon, I'm, I'm happy yeah. you are here to talk about this. Yeah, you I know? am too, I can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can imagine if any of your incidents happened mm. while you were driving for example yes yes you know yes god god is really faithful yeah um yeah i mean i was on a project uh in 2017 that took me to abidjan ivory coast and i had one there Ooh. so again seated at my computer one moment wake up again in the clinic um so yeah, there've been there've been low moments for sure, um, but I'm thankful that now I'm. What we say in in epilepsy speak or in in, in medical speak is uh, when you when you're on medication and your symptoms are managed, then we say you're a controlled you're you're controlled. Okay. Okay. So so that's that's what I am now. Um, I have what we call auras every so often. And an mm. aura is where you sense a seizure coming. Ooh, okay. Um, but now they're very, very, very mild. Um, and so I will literally like um, heavy breathing. To control and it. If, yeah. If I was speaking, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll stop for a bit. But it literally passes. Uh, it's just a few seconds long. Okay. And many people I know who live with it um, say even on medication that that'll still happen every so often. Yeah. So it's a small, very small price to pay for for healthy living. Yeah. 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 Tell, tell, tell me. Tell me. Yeah. How prevalent is epilepsy yeah and that's a good question um so it's it's a very it's been a very little known disease mm. yeah or condition actually let me let me not use the word disease and uh especially in our continent who it's you know we have all these uh superstitions you're either demon possessed or, yeah. or there's witchcraft, um, you know, all sorts of things are labeled uh, at you. Um, there's a whole lot of stigma. Yeah. And I feel like it's the condition that is, has the most stigma. Um, but we have under the International Bureau of Epilepsy, at the moment we have, um, the Intersectoral Global Action Plan, IGAP, yeah. that was signed last year. It was It's a 10-year plan, yeah, which WHO ratified. And it's really to, one of their main goals is to give visibility to epilepsy and other neurological disorders. Yeah. So um, four countries were selected as they're being called the trendsetters. Okay. So Kenya, Ghana, South Africa, and one more. Um, and so at the regional level, there's activity in those countries. Yeah. It's still baby steps. Um, but, you know, there's work going. There's conversations happening. There's intent to develop a website, uh, you know, for, for the continent. Yeah. Um, so there's good things happening, uh, but you can imagine, and that's our, our biggest challenge, uh, like, and I'm sure you'll agree, we are over 50 nations yep. that would be such a force to reckon with if we just spoke in one voice. Yeah, um, okay. But, but no. <laughs> <laughs> well. So that's one of the challenges, even, even down to... Uh, a health level where you would imagine conversations unite for the betterment of citizens. Mm. 
even that is, is presenting a challenge. But we have a formidable team on the ground. Um, in Kenya, for example, uh, you know, we have our second lady. Yeah. Um, the Pastor Rigadi's wife, Dorcas. Yeah. Uh, sorry, she's Pastor Dorcas, um, Rigadi's wife. And she's been invited to champion uh, the epilepsy cause in okay. Kenya. Okay. So that's that's an exciting thing for us. Um, and early next year, there should be all sorts of, you know, visibility with her yeah. face and the epilepsy message, mm. uh, you know, next to it. And really, just to break down, Ekene, what what I'm what I mean when I'm talking about this epilepsy, I feel like it's just a big word that at its core explains or describes several unexplained seizures. So as long as you've had more than two, yeah, um, then then you know we say you're living with epilepsy. Okay. Yeah. 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 So to answer your question, it's um it hasn't had a lot of uh global focus okay. so far it's still a very little known condition mm. Mm. but i feel like that is changing with the intentionality at the global level yeah um through that intersectoral global action plan okay. which is being piloted in the four countries wow that's well i um healthcare healthcare yeah. On our continent, it's a, yeah. it's a re- serious problem. Yes. Okay. Now, yeah. look at you. You had to travel to India. Yes. Uh, one of the things that uh, people from Nigeria, like myself, mm. uh, complain and laugh about in a country is that uh, our leaders uh always travel to Europe and America for their medical attention. That's right. And uh, many of us believe that uh, this is one of the reasons why our healthcare sector is uh, on underfunded. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So no, you're right. They 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 pass all the upcoming and present medical personnel as they fly to to the west. Um, but I, I I don't know about you, but I feel like COVID really equalized uh, nations. I mean, it's it's a few years past now, mm. but I, I I get the sense that even if that still happens, uh, especially some of the the, the Western countries, UK, US. Um, Post COVID, I feel like that that put us on an equal playing field as far as healthcare was concerned, and our continent was not as badly Impa- affected. Impacted. See, this is one of the the favors that uh, for me i think yeah. the gods yes gods uh gave africa yeah yeah but i i i i hope mm. we don't take it for granted yes okay yes, and and don't now realize that we need to do something mm to for us to be ready yes for any other eventualities yes because see like you mentioned we Mm. always talk about uh, when epilepsy epilepsy happens we we link it to witchcraft and whatever that's right yes okay very real stigma yeah, yeah yeah now i hope we don't wait for another crisis Mm. to happen Mm. before 
we decide to do something to improve our healthcare systems. Yes. Because unfortunately, unfortunately, mm. Mm. other crises are going to happen. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Okay. It's inevitable. Yeah. Other mm. crises are going to happen. Mm. And we must be ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at Nigerian uh, Nigerian leaders going abroad for healthcare, mm. and uh, I, I can I assure you, when we come to UK for healthcare, uh, majority of doctors, yeah, in the UK, okay, I won't say the majority, but a, a a large proportion of doctors in the UK. In cities like New York, California, states like California, yeah. are Nigerians. Are Nigerians, yes. Okay, so I was, was going to preempt you, you and you, say you, that you yeah. live, you live Nigeria, yes, run to Europe, Europe to be treated to meet, by a countryman to meet a Nigerian. <laughs> yeah, isn't that so ironic? So, uh, um, yeah, no, you're you're right. I mean. It's uh, it's interesting. It's sad. It is sad. Um, I know at least in our country, um, you know, we have the National Health Insurance Fund. Okay. Which is supposed to be the social security um, uh, or health health social security. Yeah. For uh, that covers um, you know, at least the you know down to the lowest the lowest cadre of, of person. Yeah. Um, should they should they have the eventuality of falling unwell? Um, and so we've recently had that revised. Um, whereas previously it was a monthly contribution of 500 shillings, which is round about three dollars now because the, the Kenya shilling has been devalued. Yeah. Um, now it sits, it's been expanded. Um, the president has put in place a health task force. Uh, so not just because there, there was the mental health task force at the end of 2019. Okay. But he's now put together a broader task force for health uh, just to sort of try and give it some focus. Mm. Um, and in response to just be because, you know, our doctors, our nurses kept going on strike, mm. you know, uh, for, for lack of payment, um, rightly so. Yeah. So, you know, then president was like, okay, let me put together this, this task force. And one of the things under what is now universal health coverage. Yeah. Uh, which was also a WHO ratified uh, thing, is the expansion of our NHIF into three pillars. But in order to achieve that, then there has to be a higher contribution per yeah. person. It's, a, it, it's a inevitable. It's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's sort of bittersweet mm. because now it's actually tied to your salary. It's just under three percent of your salary. Good. Yeah. Um, but there we are. Let's mm. let's see. Let's see what happens. Mm. Well, see. What what <laughs> what are sorry? What what are some of the activities um, being done in in Nigeria? I will tell you. I have no clue. Okay. Unfortunately. Yeah. I have no clue. All right. Uh, okay. The, la the last thing I knew. Yeah. Uh, was uh, a a couple of years ago mm. when our minister for work is it, it work no uh god i can't i can't remember his uh, portfolio his post yeah mm. he was he was saying that uh, our doctors and nurses who are jackpotting that means traveling migrating to 
Oh, you know? okay. Oh, uh-huh. they, they, can, they can go. At least they'll come back. They will, they will repatriate some dollars. Wow. I say, oh, really? Shame. No. See, uh, the, the, the point is this. My point is this. And I'm, and yeah. I'm sure many professionals also, also see this. Right. See, Africa, our demography mm. is skewed towards the young people right that's true yeah okay the young people mm-hmm. will grow old mm. okay mm-hmm. and the point the, 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 the truth of, of the matter is this as the as people grow grow, grow older mm-hmm. they will need more health care that's true okay so yeah if we don't start now mm. to develop our health care right and improve it yeah what will happen when a large proportion mm-hmm. of the population mm-hmm. need that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, these are the these are the issues uh, that we need to do. We need to handle in Africa. Yeah. Okay. Right now, uh, our healthcare, our healthcare in our countries are inadequate, mm. and because of the of our current demography means that it will be worse mm-hmm. much more worse if we don't do something yeah in in 20 years time in in yeah in 20 or 30 years to come yeah. um i was catching up on on just you know some of the activity that the au is doing okay um especially on health uh, agenda 2063 and they have you would know now the cdc centers um yeah. in, in all the major countries um and you know especially say for instance in covid then the encouragement was to seek accurate updates um, yeah. from those and uh I know there's been the Maputo protocol that has, you know, shown a big light on on youth and women. But uh, I don't know. It's it's it sounds like it's good plans. It sounds like it's good good plans. Um, but really, yet to see the implementation of it, and yeah. I'm not I'm not sure what it will take for each country to be able to, to get there. There's, I, I can acknowledge the efforts of say our country, um, whatever we have to say about our president and we don't often have nice things to say about <laughs> Well, your president uh, is doing, is doing a, a, he's, a, he's doing a fantastic his, job. His, More, yeah. For me, for me, yes. I'm not Kenyan, but I, yeah. I see the media mm. presentation Okay, mm. that sound mm-hmm. that sound nice. That he's mm. thinking differently, and yeah. his his government might be implementing something a little bit revo- revolutionary. Revolutionary. Okay? Uh, but like you said, mm. execution. Everything is about the ex- execution. Everything is in the execution, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Stories. Uh, well, um, the 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 best part of the story is that yeah, you are here. Yes, that's the best part of the story. That's the best part. Yeah, you are here to tell that yes. story. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that see, is that is definitely the win. Yeah, that that's the yeah. biggest win. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, you you had to leave your. Your employment, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. This uh, this happens a lot, mm. a lot. When that's why you call it a, a life changing event. Yes. You know. Yeah. Uh, tell me, how how did you feel having to mm. to leave your your career, your your job? Mm. To focus on the on that fight, yeah. 
So, like I said, it wasn't an easy decision um, because I could see back then in 2013, and it's, you know, it feels like I blinked and 10 years have gone by. Um, but I, I do remember sitting around the table that time in 2013 and the MD, you know, really just asking for, for the organization to be given a chance to work mm. around, you know, my situation. Um, but I just, with, with the little information I had then, yeah. um, I just, I felt like it was too much of a risk mm. to stay on. So, so I opted to leave and, uh, and that's how I ended up, you know, I, I was in the job, you know, job market for a while. My parents were doing this thing and they invited me to join them on. Um, but we eventually had to let that go. Um, so a few years, you know, up and about, and then that's when I, I start the business. So um, it's been life-changing as far as, for instance, as we speak, I'm not sure that I can say hold a, a typical nine to five. Um, yes, I'm well, yes, I'm healthy, yes, I'm, I'm controlled, um, but it's probably the combination of uh, the, the, the stigma. Mm. If I was to now tell my HR, for example, mm. uh, for some concessions that this is, you know, this is what I'm living with. Um, and also, I just, I, I know for a fact that a lot of places that uh, are in my scope of work, which is around strategy and, and, and market research, um, are a lot busier right now. You saw the the redundancies that yeah. came with COVID. Yeah. So I'm here. I'm doing the work of two other people. I end up being stressed. Stress is a is a direct trigger. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Um. So that sort of keeps me uh just continuously trying to be creative around you know marketing my services. Uh, sometimes at the end of the month, when say I haven't been on a project for a few months, um, it does get sad, uh, because, you know, in a different life, yeah. that, that would, that would not have been me. Um, but on the flip side, I, I'm choosing to take a position of gratitude. So, um, for whatever you know, lack of funds, I, I don't have, um, I have life, I have laughter. That, that's it. I have, you know, um, and I feel like especially my contribution um, in epilepsy awareness, in epilepsy policy making, um, you know, will play its part as far as raising visibility of it. Yeah. As a result of that, I got more interested, if you like, uh, in the mental health space. Yeah. Um, and so in our country, we, just by way of background, uh, the then Minister for Health in 2019 put together a, a task force, a mental health task force. And one of my colleagues um, came across it and didn't see any representation from the people who actually live <laughs> with the conditions. Mm. It had psychiatrists, it had psychologists, and but she was like, you know, where, where are we? So a group of us, she invited a group of us, we agitated, we called a press conference, and uh, she ended up getting onto the task force. Okay. Um, and so as a result of that, the, you know, the influences in our different spaces 
for the conditions we lived with. Um, then we asked ourselves, okay, what if we came together? You know, what, what could we do together? Um, and so the concept of the Mental Health Alliance of Kenya was born. Mm. Um, there were big plans for it to register it and to um, get grants and things like that yeah. for, for development work. As we speak, we now just exist, uh, you know, on a chat group. But and I was elected team lead. Okay. Um, so I now I'm now fine with just having access to resource people yeah. for different conditions. Um, because I don't I don't think that that's a given. Um, you know, that I have head of autism and head of, uh, you know, all those associations yeah. um, on, on speed dial. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's how I got to be involved in, in the mental health space. Mm -hmm. And perhaps to preempt your question, that's how my podcast was born. Aha, aha. Yeah. That's true. See, yeah. before before we talk about your podcast, see, right. you mentioned that uh, due to your condition, yeah, you wouldn't advocate that for you to get back to your former work shadow. Okay. It's, yes, it's, yes, it's, former work yeah. schedule. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, I I I say for for myself, mm. I wouldn't I don't want to get back to what I did, okay? Right. But I say to myself, I wouldn't if I was a manager mm. in that space, mm. I would not hire me. Mm. Now I have all my all, all my non knowledge. Yes, the knowledge is not the thing that did the job I did. Yes. Okay. See, mm. there's there's a lot. There was a lot of uh, negotiations, mm. arguments to get things done. Yes. In my current self. Yes. I don't want to get into that those negotiations i right. i just i just don't want it right okay mm. now see the way i speak if you remember what the way i, I used to speak i used to speak very fast mm. now i have to think about the words because right. even though i can speak Say even that. though i, I yeah. can speak yes. okay yeah I, I there are so many words one I can pronounce mm. two. Okay. I don't. I don't even know. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I I think I know it, but okay. I can't. I can't remember what that word is called. Okay. Okay. So, right. for me, if I get back to my many times when I need to talk to people, mm. I have to tell them, hey. I, I want to talk to you about this, but okay. there are so many words I I can't use. So mm. I see when I speak to people mm. in my mind, I have to replace words. Yes. Just because I can't remember how that word I, I might know I might know a word. Yes. This is something that 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 is fascinating to me. Yes. How the brain works. Yes. I know a word, mm. but I can't speak it. Mm. I don't know. I don't know how the <laughs> how that works. <laughs> yeah. You, you know a word. Yes, you know. Yes. It. Yeah. But, but you, you can't, can't articulate it. You can't articulate it. Yeah. I can I I sometimes I can use a word. But I can't spell it. Mm. Sometimes I say I say a word that sounds with an S, for example. Yes. Uh -huh. okay? 
I will tell you, I might sit down here for five minutes mm. trying to remember how to write an S. Okay. <laughs> See, there, there are so many d different things, but uh, the brain yeah. is, a, is, is a wonderful uh no, oh, it is. It it's, is. It's, 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 it's very fascinating wonderful. and complex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. So when I when I see you, I'm mm. happy you are here. Yes. I'm happy I'm here. Yes. You know. Especially, so. especially at you know, as we age. Yeah. Because then it's uh it's not a given. Yeah. I've been through a season of my peers losing one or more parents. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you have as well. Mm -hmm. my, um, my mom, for example, is gone. Doing oh, my, I see. Poly. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing my, my, my struggle, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, yeah. So, so it's, 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 it's good to be, it's good to be thankful for life. And um, and to do the best we can for these bodies, yeah, these yep. bodies that we are going to leave when we when we when one we day. leave this life one day, <laughs> one day, yeah, yeah. So so you 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 alluded to your podcast, yes, right? yeah, that you, you sounded as if it was in the past. Yes. Well, uh, wellness and you. Wellness and you, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I know you started it some uh -huh. maybe a year ago, and and yes. you haven't uh, uh, what's the word now? See, that's that example. Okay. Yes. A yeah. word you have not published a new a new episode. Yes. Yes. So so what happened is. Because of um, the that Mental Health Alliance of Kenya not quite taking the shape <laughs> that I had desired, I thought, okay, let me get a platform to give visibility um, to some of these conditions. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't have a budget, mm. uh, but a, a brother, a friend of my brother's, uh, volunteered to put them together for me. Um, very kind of him. So we did 12 episodes in total, yeah. each episode a half hour each. And a number of them were, we'd, re we'd record them as an hour mm. and then split and yeah. release in half an hour. Um, and it's, you know, I, I even got into... Um, a local association of the media women in Kenya because, you know, at the end of the day, that podcast is a medium. Yeah. Um, and I put some links to some of the episodes there. Uh, but I parked it for now um, mainly because of funding. Mm. Um, you would appreciate. Yeah. That I do. I do. <laughs> it's 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 not uh, it's not an easy or affordable thing to to have the podcast out regularly. So I put that aside because of funding and because of um, just giving it some strategic input. Yeah. So that when I get back, then I'll want it to take a certain direction. Yeah. So right now it's in the past, yes. Well, well, it might be the past, but uh, I think yeah. uh, or on hold. Let me say, yeah, on hold. On, on very, hold. very good, yeah. very good. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I, I believe that uh, uh, you are the kind of person to to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have your personal experiences, mm -hmm. uh, so you be an, an ideal person to yeah. help other people to talk about their experiences. Right. You know? Yeah. 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 So. No, thanks for that. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, 
will be the first to know when it's back online. Good, good, good. Yeah. So um, we started this this uh, discussion talking about uh, mm. my travel to Nairobi. Yes. yes. Mm. So uh, I, I, in fact, before before COVID started, mm. uh, I built my main business, a coaching mm. platform. Mm -hmm. which I decided to focus on Africa. Yes. You know, I built it, tested it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and then COVID happened mm -hmm. uh, because I focused on young Africans. Yes. Unfortunately, most of them do not have uh, constant work. Yes. You know, COVID happened mm -hmm. and most of them lost their jobs. Right. Okay. So, Yes, just like you packed your podcast, mm. then I had to pack that platform. Okay. And then in the middle of COVID, mm. I started this podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I was planning to do before then was that, hey, I'll be traveling uh, around Africa, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. Uh, which hasn't happened. Okay? Yes. But, but. Hasn't happened still, yet. Yeah, yet very good, yeah. very good. Yeah, but it's it's still my my. See, I think about it every day. Okay. Yeah. So so see, I know you have done a few a few trips across the, the continent. So I I oh. want you to tell me about yeah, those those <laughs> nice places that you have visited. Yeah. Yeah. Um. When I looked back again over the countries I visited um, and I think all of them were for work mm. um, Uganda, Tanzania Rwanda South Africa, Gabon, Botswana Wow um, so I, I so I did an interesting thing Ekene yeah I, I thought let me find out what's happening or what what's the What's the sort of breaking news? Okay. In 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 those countries now. Uh, since my trips, and I think the last trip was. Um, oh, the last trip was actually to Abidjan, and Cote d'Ivoire in uh, okay. 2017. Mm. So I thought it would be interesting to. I'm just looking through my notebook. Um, to kind of see what's happening there. So I went to Uganda in 2010. I was with the BAT then. Okay. And today, one of the big stories is the anti-LGBTQ okay. activities. So um, the president, Museveni, has been very vocal mm. about the crimin criminalizing it. Yeah. And so... You know, when I when I looked through the news, one of the stories was that actually someone faced the death penalty mm. um, for that, for LGBTQ activity. Yeah. And then Tanzania, I went uh, a bit before that, 2005, yeah. with a different employer. Um, and then today... Um, They are yes, I had gone, I had gone to see um to meet the a TV, a leading TV broadcaster, because then yeah. I was in, in in media research. So that one I didn't quite pick up what is happening. Mm. South Africa, I went again also with market research, a yeah. different company I went in 2012. And uh the breaking news is now nicknamed Farmgate. Hmm? What's that? So, <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, what's that? So apparently the current president, Sam Ramaphosa, mm. his farm was allegedly raided in 2020, February oh. of 2020. Uh, and then the name of the farm, farm is Falafala. 
P-H-A-L-A, P-H-A-L-A. Um, and so allegedly, um, reports coming in was that there was an estimate $4 million that was stolen, okay? But other reports claim that it's under a million dollars, so 580,000. So his opposition are putting, especially the um, South African Reserve Bank on okay. the spot mm. because they claim, you know, they believe that the central bank of SA yeah. was in cahoots with the president. <laughs> Okay. To, yeah, because this was this was a foreign currency. Yeah. USD. So it's it's the big story. It's it's like it's the uh, trending news. Oh. Uh, yeah. And then I went to Botswana also in 2012. Okay. Uh and it's actually it's Omicron, mm. the strain of uh COVID yeah. that came at the end of uh 2021 was it yeah but about yeah, that yeah there about mm -hmm. yeah it was actually discovered in a botswana lab so that was interesting in november interesting. 2020 yeah and then uh gabon in the same year mm. 2012 um and now uh there's a new president after elections okay because um, by the time I went, Ali Bongo was the president. Mm. Yeah, um, on, on, I, I, he was until a few months ago. Until a few months ago, mm. yeah. And mm. apparently now the Bongo family have been in leadership for 50 years plus. So he was actually overthrown by, you know, by a military coup. His wife is currently in jail. Um, so, so that's the news. So I just, I, I just thought that was interesting to do. Yeah, yeah. So many See, years later. What, what just, what you've just done is something yeah. I think we need for people like me and many, many Africans will actually like like this. Okay. Right. Maybe, maybe, maybe you, you, you do it. Okay. Have an uh -huh. app. Have an app. Uh huh. That's aggregates all the news in African countries. Okay. Yeah. That's a thought. African news app. Yeah. Hmm. African news app. Hmm. Highlights. Highlights yeah. of the Highlights. Day. Yeah. Highlights. Yeah. From independent sources. <laughs> highlights. So yeah. if you have the app uh -huh. and I'm, I'm interested to know what is going on in Egypt, I just click mm. on Egypt and I can see the highlight of the main news. Yeah. Hey. Hey. This is a good one. This is a good yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely worth thinking about. Yeah. I hope. I hope. I hope one one of young young guys who listens to this episode might uh, take it up. You know. I know. I'll yeah. be on this side waiting for a call. <laughs> So, uh, Sharon, see, one of the things I love to do is to read books. Yeah. I love it so much. Okay. I see, I see the full library behind so you. You, you, you. You don't see what. See, this is the the, the smaller one. Okay, all around uh -huh. on, the, on this table. Uh huh. Around me, books uh -huh. everywhere. Okay, I love uh -huh. reading books. Okay, even uh -huh. though, even though. I have difficulty reading. Okay. Okay. Well, I still do. I do a lot on audiobook. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, I see. Okay. So uh because I love books and I want young Africans to read. Yeah. Yeah. So I I tell I ask my guests mm. to recommend five titles. Okay, so please okay. recommend five titles for my audience to put in the libraries and hopefully they will, they will read them. 
and hopefully they'll read them. Yes. All right. So I, I put in a few, I put in a few points and I will, I, I didn't, I didn't hit the, the five, Okay. but I came very close to a four. Okay. Um, so for me, I, I enjoy reading. I used to be a reader of uh, a lot of fiction. Okay. And then um, I read various authors. Uh, and presently, because like I was saying, I'm, I'm constantly looking to, to see, you know, how I can grow my business and how I can be more productive. Um, so I have a combination of uh, book names. So the okay. first for me is Atomic Habits oh, okay. by James Clear. Mm -hmm. And the reason that it did this for me was within the, within the topics that are covered, there is something called the four laws of behavior change, mm. uh, which are uh, Q, the Q for behavior the craving to get it done. Okay. The response when it's done and then the reward for doing it. Yeah. So that was, that was what stood out for me. And, um, the single, uh, you know, little thing that I took away was a practice called habit stacking mm. and there, uh, with something that I already do consistently. I pile on a new habit mm. and sort of match them so that habit two rides onto habit habit one. And then now I develop both two and one. Okay. So that's 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 something that that stood out for me. Um the second is um probably already mentioned by a number of people. It's a it's an old, fairly old book by now, um, Americana. Mm. nobody has so, ever mentioned it so it's a big one for us ah okay yes. so Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie the beautiful writer yeah who's Nigerian American and um for me what stood out was of course it's the story of a young Nigerian uh, lady who moves to the U.S. yeah and just just experiences that life. Mm. And I was watching an interview of hers um, last year, it was, and she was saying, you know, when you're in Nigeria, all of you look alike. Mm -hmm. yeah? So now when you move to the US, all of a sudden you're different. Yeah. Seeing as now you're black mm. and you're not the black American, yeah. you're black African. Yeah. And so that in itself just brought up a whole issue of race. Okay. Identity, belonging. Um, but the story is really, really, um, I enjoyed, I really enjoyed the story. The third one is, is a by Kenyan author. Okay. And it's hot off the press. Um, and it's called The Confederate. Okay. And uh, the main main uh, protagonist, if you like, is Vanessa. So it's called, the full name is The Confederate, a Vanessa series book one, which presupposes there'll be other books. Yeah. And uh, for him, I actually edited that book. Ah. Um, so he's, the author was in the Kenya Defense Forces in the cyber division. Okay. And so he has, uh, weaved together cyber genre mm. and um, and creative. And uh, within it, there's lots of things like <laughs> I couldn't understand cyber speak. Okay. But as far as the story, um, it was very thrilling. And I figure with just our young African, our young Africans who Yes, there will be there's there's uh, we do want to create more jobs for them, but increasingly we are needing to encourage them to be job creators. Yeah, 
then in the digital and innovation space, this is something that I feel would be not just interesting, but, but beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last one is a soul of small places. Mm. And I haven't read it, but I do want to, because uh, this book was on the Kane prize list for okay. this year. Okay. Um, and it's actually the first time a husband and wife have won ah. uh, the Kane prize since it's, it's, since it's inception. Interesting. Um, so yes, very interesting. And I'm, I'm going to read it and message you how I found it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much. Sure. Good. Good. We have, uh, I have a lot of young Africans. Yeah. Okay. And, mm. uh, I really want see for me, me and you, uh, are getting older yes so maturer uh, maturer okay maturing yes you're, <laughs> you're right you're very right <laughs> yes but the people yeah. who actually build africa are yeah. younger than us okay that's right okay yeah. so i want to encourage them mm -hmm. uh to to start doing things yeah in their community okay yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. do things for themselves and mm -hmm. to imp that we impact their community. So mm -hmm. what's your advice for them? Yeah. To, for him for them to start contributing to their communities. To their communities, yeah. Yes. Um and I would imagine that's sort of like 20, 30 years to come. Well, yeah, they, they start they start now and then the yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. the and the and the results would be down that side. Yeah. So you know what? I, I thought about that in a couple of things come to mind. Mm. The first thing for me is find a cause you believe in. Okay. okay? Um, I have put in some effort and I'm going to continue putting some effort into health and mental health. Mm. Um, There's so many causes on the continent. Yeah. You know, um, so find a cause you believe in and you don't even have to be sort of like uh, skilled in it already develop skill learn read I was sitting at a table uh, at an event a few weeks ago um, and you know at our table we had a young girl just as young as 13 and her cause was tree planting you know oh interesting yeah you know so I'm like you know do you know find something you believe in um and if you can't do, if you can't collect information by reading, listen. Yeah, just like you and your audiobooks. Yeah. Um, and then be part of solutions. I know that we we live on a continent riddled with corruption. Mm. Um, you are in my country included. Yeah. Um, and in fact, it was this author of the book I edited. We were speaking about because he's a uh, he's ex Kenya Defense Forces, and he parted in an acrimonious way mm. from them. So for all intents and purposes, he shouldn't want to be involved in in Kenya's story going mm. forward. But you know what? He's like I'm a Kenyan, and I want to be part of the solution. Yeah, you know. And I'm thinking if if that person who for all intents and purposes, shouldn't want yeah. to be, how much more you and I to be part of the solution? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. So I think that's, those, those are the two things I would say. Okay. You know, Okay. find a cause you believe in, learn about it, work on it, and uh, just be part of the change you want to see. I know it's cliche. Yeah. But it's it's, um, it's true. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. But it's true. Yeah. yeah. And and you know, it said that when you find yourself constantly plagued by something, by how something is done, that's a call to you to be part of that change. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if it's bothering yeah. you so much, just hop in, 
and and be part of changing it good to, to what you like good good so let me ask you my my usual last question okay okay uh in 30 years time hopefully we are we are here yeah okay uh what kind of africa do you want to see then yeah um i think first of all and just going going over what we've been discussing mm. um i want to see a healthy continent okay you know we've mental health falls under what we call non-communicable diseases that's abbreviated ncds and uh in as much as they're the leading cause of death in a lot of africa um they still remain heavily underfunded just treatment wise research wise um so i definitely want to see growth in that area um and just economic transformation yeah um i was also just catching up on um the africa transformation report that sits under the au mm -hmm. and many people have said it before many people will say it we are very natural resource rich as a mm. continent mm. but the only thing that is our downfall is not working together um so i <laughs> well the main thing that is our downfall i'd be curious to hear yeah, what, what i i i have a different continue continue okay huh? yeah. yeah so so um i know there's practices like the africa continental free trade area i know there's all these efforts and i feel like they are yet to bear fruit yeah but um i just i our economic transformation will greatly benefit yeah um in partnership so i yeah. want to see perhaps not a fully united africa 20 30 years to come but one that is much more united yeah definitely definitely yeah Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah so those are my two those are my two visions okay for the continent and, and that, that great ones yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah wow sharon why did you shake uh, your head well see i see if we start talk, talking about that today mm, it yeah. will take us uh another one hour okay a, a whole other podcast yes okay so <laughs> All right. now now, do I want Africa to be more united? Definitely, most okay. definitely. Okay? okay. But my 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 question is this, or my concern is this: Yeah, we have been wanting that since the sixties. Okay. Okay, mm. and it hasn't happened. Mm. And today. Mm -hmm. people who promote pan-africanism yeah. still say the same that the same the reason why it hasn't happened the same reason that, that they, were, they were given in in the, in 60s, the 60s as mm -hmm. the same reason they're given today okay okay so that that tells me they mm. are refusing to look deeper Okay. Okay. They have okay. decided that this this is the was the reason back then, mm -hmm. and today they are still holding on to that same reason. Mm -hmm. That tells me uh, I, I'll use this. Mm -hmm. uh, let me not say this. Okay. <laughs> See, but my 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 point is this: they right. are they are refusing to look deeper at other things that may be contributing into the, the lack of unity yeah. okay. and, on, and, and, on, and until fair. and until yeah. we yeah. understand the reason why we are not united okay we continue, we, we continue complaining and it, it did not happen okay okay 
That's you a fair that, point. That, that's the only reason why I should. Do I want yeah. it? Yes. Yes. Okay? Yeah. I want it. Yeah. yeah. Because, mm. like you said, if we are more united, mm. more things will happen. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, Sharon. We agree change, on change. that. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. See, uh, like like I said earlier, I'm mm. happy you are here. I'm yeah. happy I'm here. All right. Yeah. So we have yeah. we had a, a good conversation today, and yeah. uh, I hope uh, we continue having this conversation privately yes. from now. And uh, yes. uh, thank you, thank you very much for being a great guest of the Think Big for Africa podcast. No, you're so welcome, Ekene. Yeah. I'm I'm really glad to have been your guest. And I look forward to many more conversations. Good. Uh, offline. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank okay, you. Okay, then. Bye-bye. Goodbye. You have a good night. You too.